<laughs> so key of C is the major. What's relative minor? A, A, A minor. A minor. Right. Now, just like the key of C, one to the right and one to the left are the, the, the keys, the minors that go with it. Okay, so in the key of C, the three major chords you'll see most often are C, F, and G, right? And if I ask you what are the three minor chords in the key of C, you will go to 9 o'clock, angle 1 to the right, D minor, and 1 to the left, E minor. Now keep in mind, those chords could also be majors. It depends on the melody line, but generally, that's how it works. Remember when we wrote 1 through 8 on the board? And we, should we, maybe we should do that. Just write, no, don't erase. Write one, uh, 1 through 8. Now, this will explain it the way they explain it in college, okay? Because I think you got to know that before you can cheat. All right, so let's write a C scale under those numbers. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. All right, now, if we make each one of those steps of the scale into a chord, all right, how many sharps or flats does the key of C have? Zip, zero. All right, so let's spell a C chord under number one. Now, in college, number one is a Roman numeral, okay? And you, so you gotta learn Roman numerals. So, so it's also called the tonic. Tonic means tone on which the song is based. Okay, so key of C is the tonic note. All right, so spell C chord. C, E, G. Now, if you're listening on the video, if you're a piano student, this would be an arpeggio or a triad. Okay, the notes that you would play arpeggios or triads with. That's a C triad. Okay, so spell it down. C, E, G. Just write it under. There you go. Number one chord in any key, if you make it, tone, if you make it into a chord, will always be major. Okay? So see the circle? C major, right at the top, tonic, most important chord, okay? Number two chord is called the super tonic. Above the tonic, super, over. All right, spell a D chord. D, F sharp, A, okay? So write that in there. Now here's the deal. There are no sharps or flats in the key of C, correct? So consequently, you cannot have a sharp or flat in the chord. What happens to a chord when you flat the third? It becomes a minor. Okay, so get rid of that F sharp. The second step of a scale, if you make it into a chord, becomes minor. And this is true in any scale. Okay, so put a little M above a two. And a big M, a capital M above a one. There you go. All right, number three, how do you spell an E chord? E, G sharp, B. Can't have G sharp, correct? Correct. So again, number three becomes minor. Number four, how do you spell it? F, A, C. All right, that one's fine, so that's a major. G chord, G, B, D. That one's fine. That is called the dominant. Number five chord, and, and you hear musicians say, play number five chord, play number four chord. That's what they mean. The chord that comes from the scale. A five chord in the key of C, or any key, is major. It's called the dominant. Or next tonic, most important. Dominant, next most important. Okay? And number four is called the sub dominant means under the dominant and number three is called the median which is medium in the middle okay number six a c sharp e oops can't have c sharp correct so that is a minor number seven is a b d sharp f sharp uh-oh can't have either one of those so what does that chord become diminished it comes invisible, so we're going to erase it. One through six is pretty much all you're going to use. Okay? So, if I say to you in the key of C, 
play the major chords, what will you do? C, F, and G. C, E, and G is how you spell the C chord. And that's, that's the hardest thing to comprehend. So you're asking for major, so they're going to go one, one four, four, and five. And five. To spell so, A, C chord, F, it's one, three, and five. We're using the scale for multiple purposes here. Now we're just trying to figure out what chords are in the key of C. Okay, and that's the hardest thing to separate. And you have to be able to go back and forth yeah. on that. you got to flip from chord to, to the scale. Right, yes. So you got to say, if I want one chord, just one chord. C chord, C, E, G. But if I want to know the chords in the key of C, I need to use that whole scale. All right, so what are the minor chords in the key of C? D, E, e and A. a. Now there was a day before I started playing with the circle, you got to know the scales. Or I had to, every time I had to write down the scale. And I still do. Oh my gosh, it was a pain. I don't do that anymore. You got my trusty circle, and that's all I need. But do you understand how that, how that came about? Now, erase all that. You're going to be so relieved that you don't need any of that. All right? All you need is the circle, and you've got to know the rule. Okay? It's like telling time. So, key of C. Put C at 12 o'clock, and then just look up there for now. C, what are the major chords? C, F, and G. Where is the relative minor? A. A. That's number six on the scale. That was minor, right? <coughs> the sixth step of the scale is the relative minor key to the major key. Now, and what are the, the, the chords that go with it? D minor and E minor. And that's, I shouldn't have erased that yet. Because that's what it was on the scale, right? Okay, so... Key of F. Point to key of F up there. Let's just pretend we're using the circle right now. But see why it's important to have a little circle that you can turn? All right. Key of F. Look up here. What are the three major chords in the key of F? C, F, and B flat. C, F, and B flat. All right? What is at 9 o'clock? What would be at 9 o'clock if key of F is at, was at 12? G. D. D minor. Because everything is shifting. That's the relative minor key for the key of F. And what are the other minor chords? A minor, G minor. A minor and G minor. All right, let's use a circle now. I would like to play a song in the key of D. Okay, put D at 12 o'clock. We're just going to use the outside of the circle. All right, what are the three major chords in the key of D? D, G, and A. Okay? What chord is at 9 o'clock? B. That's a relative minor. You guys are going to be so smart when somebody tries to catch you. Okay? And what are the chords that go with it? B minor, E minor, and G flat minor. That's it. Now, how cool is that? Okay, so what? what where, how is this going to make you a better musician? You, you don't know, do you? You know the chords in the song. It's it pretty much expected chords in the song. Right. It's called anticipate, an, anticipate the Next Chord. And here's the reason most people don't play better than they should. is because they didn't.